support, of course, to Jordi Torres, as ever, the poor sitter and the man that finished second in the earlier race today, getting a, a quick hug from team boss Nico Tarol. A bit of luck we'll hear from uh, Jordi quite soon, I imagine, with uh, Fran in close attendance. In fact, let's pass down to Fran, who is with Jordi Torres. I am indeed. So I said, guys, keep it clean, because who knows when you're together. But Jordi, great first race, not quite got enough for Matteo. Have you been looking at the data? What do you think you've got now in the second outing? Yeah, the most important now is focus in our rival. That means that we must to control Matteo Krumenager also, because he has a good pace in the last part of the race. But for sure, we need to try something different during the race. To, to adapt my riding style to be more faster at the beginning in the first point of when we touch the throttle on the exit of corner. We'll see what happens, but for sure we'll put everything. And Jake, what did you make of the first race? We've seen you with pretty much everyone. I hope you're getting live coaching uh, fees. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, I'm just giving everyone tips, you know. I'm here for Jordi, I'm there for Fabio. I'm just there for a the lot of them. But, uh, so you two out of two on podiums today? Exactly. Management's going well, so I'm going to talk to some teams for them all. Um, but no, he's good. Uh, I think he rode a fantastic first race. I just said to him, if he has a good start, like he did in the last one, close the door a bit in corner 3-4, so uh, Matteo cannot come up the inside of him. Um, and if he can do that, I think then he can be there for, for the race, the whole, the whole race. Let's see then. Thanks very much, guys. Best of luck, Jody. Thank you. Thanks very much, Fran, and thanks to Jake Dixon and Jordi Torres down there on the grid. Yes, close the door into turn three and four. That's obviously where Matteo Ferrari made the race winning overtake right at the start of race one. Will be interesting to see Matt, what this man can do because he was very much the coming force towards the end of the race earlier today. Randy Krumenacker coming through from the front of the second row. Uh, if he can start a little faster, he could maybe be up there with uh, both Ferrari and Torres. Well, yeah, you have to factor in that the Krumenacker finished less than a second off the victory in today's earlier race. He's certainly a contender for this one. Uh, now and also he's got a bit of extra motivation. He is well on the chase of his teammate Hector Garzo in the championship standings 91 points has the Swiss rider the Spaniard 93 just two ahead of him so all to play for here. Just Go ahead, to add Brian. to that yeah I was thinking in the first race and he said I mean often riders will say like yeah if I just got through the battle quicker then I could have caught him and it's like well yes but that is the race uh, however it seems very true of Krumenaka with that pace that he had late on maybe with the number of laps we'd had at the Saxon ring we would have seen a final chicane dive but uh, yeah I think Randy could be interesting if he can get that start and have a bit of a cleaner first couple of laps to stick with the top two I'm assuming may well once again be Jordi and Matteo. Could well be. I would certainly like to see uh, the, the likes of Casaday fight through from his more lowly grip position. Or what about Eric Granado as well? He really fell back in that first race, unfortunately. Three seconds off the win hit the Brazilian was sixth place at the flag. We saw Mantovani on our screens earlier. He was fifth in today's race. Pons, another one. He starts from seventh on the grid, but in race one earlier on today, Neil, he fell back to 11th. Yeah, he did. Disappointed, you would have to say, from Mikel Pons, who just hasn't quite been uh, himself of previous years in this year's series so far. Still adapting, of course, to the uh, new Ducati machinery that we have. This man was probably the best starter of the entire lot on the grid. Kevin Snoddy rose from eighth up into fourth, I think, on the first lap, and then eventually dropped down to 12th at the end, but, uh, or sorry, to 10th, I should say. But uh, fast starter is an only one to look out for off the start. Yeah, Hector Garzo, though, I do want to mention him. He uh, ended up starting from uh, 12th, well, sorry, he qualified 12th on the grid, um, and, well, stayed 12th on the grid, I should say. I was trying to factor in yesterday's uh, penalty, of course, as he got pole position yesterday, but an incorrect tyre pressure meant that he was bumped down. Garzo had a cracking race, 12th down to about 14th, then moved up to 7th. But let's see, then, we're about to... Uh, Head towards the front row for a little final look before we check out the full rundown of the grid. There is Torres with Dixon alongside him. This was Cassidy, who technically qualified first, but then was demoted due to incorrect tyre pressure. What can he come up with from this one? Fourth in race one. What about here in race two?
final rundown of the grid then as the generators depart we have Torres on pole position from Ferrari and Granado Krumenaka takes off first from row two then Mantovani second on that row Zaccone in sixth place overall row three is as follows Mikel Pons is it is going to move no why is it so slow today much quicker normally there we go Zanoni eighth place on the grid Rabat ninth then we have Cassaday leading row four his teammate Spinelli 11th place Garzo in 12th then on the fifth row of the grid we have Akubo taken off from the flying mustache that is Kevin Manfredi Luca Salvadori on the outside of that one will hopefully get to it in a short period of time then on the final row, we have Alessio Finello, Mika Perez, and Maria Herrera then. So, your 18 starters here in MotoE, all in order. What drama awaits here in race two? The wind is picking up ever so slightly. They've got a, is that a headwind down the front straight? I think it is. Some clouds overhead, the humidity is rising. What impact will that have, Frank? It's not too bad compared to yesterday. The flags down pit lane today are just gently flowing in the breeze, whereas yesterday it was a little bit adverse. And less than a minute to go until the race starts. It's time to pass on to you, Fran. Who's your prediction for this one? Um, OK, I'm going to play it safe and say race one winner, Matteo Ferrari. But of course, as ever, hoping for the best race possible. Let's see what Torres can do with a bit of Dixon's advice. What about you guys? I'm going to go with Krumanaka. Krumanak is a good shot. I think maybe uh, Eric Granado can find something between the races inside of the front row. If he starts well, maybe we can see the Brazilian up there towards the front. Also a great thrilling shout. I'm yeah. very excited for this one now. I feel like it's going to be good. Yeah, I hope some people have done some homework in the few hours we've had between race one and race two. What can We're looking at Eric Granado on our screens there. I know all of Brazil will be behind him. Might have been an early start for them, watching him over some very early breakfast uh, in over our lunchtime race. But this afternoon, far more leisurely period of time on a Saturday afternoon for them to cheer him on. Well then, we await for the silence to pray. You can hear the cheers of the fans still sticking around to watch this Moto E race two then. We will await the red flag to wave at the front of the grid. There is Garzo with a cracking ride earlier on from 12th on the grid up to 7th. What more can he do this afternoon? Fighting for that top three spot in the championship, I remind you. The red flag departs. We await the starter's orders. The lights go red and we will be off racing. The lights out and away we go. Moto E race two in Aston. It's a cracking start from it. Uh, looks like Eric Granada could well be getting the whole shot, but no. Torres supreme on the brakes. Granada stops in the second place. Ferrari in third. And is that quite that group for? I think it is, Neil. I think it is, yeah. Kevin's not in another great job off the line. He's up to fifth, but it's on the grid. It's Granado shoves Ferrari wide. He does not want to be bogged down like he was in race one. Got truly beaten up, did the pavilion. Onto the back straight we come then for that first time. There we have Garzo versus Mantovani. Positions eighth and ninth. That's a great start from Garzo. Good job from him. Yeah, Cassidy's already got up to six. He's disposed with the goal points in the first set of this first lap. So four positions for Cassidy in the first half a lap. Got to hand it to Kevin Zanoni, much better keeping him at a solid start than he did in race one, not quite punting back through the field like he did beforehand. Ooh. Careful of the goals! We do not want any, and Philip Harland, Iannone repeats, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, who's the hat in the background? That looks like a panic fight could be. I'm not quite sure. Deary me, that was a big off in the background there. That's a fast place to go down. It's Tito Rabat. Oh, he's furious. Absolutely furious, understandably so. Big shame for Tito. This has probably been his best weekend of the season so far. That asset, but unfortunately, it's ended with the crash in the gravel. Looks as though Tito's completely fine at World Star. Oh, 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 o
Cassidy's just made a great move on Randy Krumenacker going through turn three. Cassidy, the man on the move. Cassidy could well be in the fight for the podium here. Who says that if you don't get a good qualification in Moto E, that you're down and out of race winning contention? Sensational stuff. Up six places in just over a lap. Yeah, absolutely. He's got four tenths of a second line to make up. Sensational progress from Cassidy, who was, of course, on the pole position yesterday, only to be disqualified due to the uh, regular tire pressure on his fastest lap. But he definitely does have the speed. Well, then, in to turn seven, we come. We've got Torres, Granado, Ferrari looking at the inside of the 51 there. But no room at the end, says Eric. Now we wind it up onto the back straight towards Maven Mir, Holger Heide, Ramshook, and the Gert, Tim Chicane. Iconic name in motorcycle racing and now with Moto E oh they're so so close this time around aren't they Torres leading quite comfortably but he's not able to get away like his main rival Ferrari did in race one so go on board with Jody Torres into the GT Shakir it's pretty much as you were you can see Eric Ronaldo get a little bit of air underneath his front wheel he's changed his direction Torres was fast at the start of race one, but he didn't have an answer for Matteo Ferrari towards the end in the final laps. And uh, well, I think the big test is going to come for this time in the, the laps to come. But you can see that the TFS has made the quickest lap of the race so far. Brilliant start for the number 40. Clearly riding quite angrily from the what could have been pole position in such an easier task today. Is that Granado? Oh! nearly clipping the back of Ferrari then goodness me Ferrari just parked it in front of him he had nowhere really to go he does carry a lot of corner speed does the 51 he certainly does and now Cassidy has to get past Granado to see if he has a chance of joining this fight for victory you do say no the evidence he certainly has the speed but uh, getting past Eric Granado and Pierre Hassan of Tackery is so strong could be difficult he has a look into Stephen Ball turn in not quite close enough to do it there but you have to feel Move isn't coming. That was a supreme corner speed from Granado there. So sort of guard this line. But look at this now then. We have Ferrari looking at the inside of Torres. Torres guards it quickly. Blimey, that was very reactionary from the 81, wasn't it? But Ferrari, the 11, cuts an inside line there. Torres sideways on the way out of the turn as well. Here we come then. Top speed for Moto E. Absolutely, I have to say I'm really surprised Randy Krumenak is having a bit of a nightmare. He has just been beaten up and shuffled all the way back to 90. He's now behind Hector Garzo, his teammate who qualified in 12. So Krumenak is going to be challenged to his It might be down to me predicting him for the win, unfortunately. And oh, I think they're just missing a potential overtake from Ferrari on Torres. No, not quite. He had a look, but could not make anything stick. Yeah, and Cassidy isn't the only Italian that's joining this group. Look at Mantovani, the number nine in fifth position. You can see there that he's joined on the back of Eric Granado and Cassidy for this fight for third. You can see though, as we saw in race one, the top two just eking out a tenth by tenth a little advantage. It's up to six tenths now between Ferrari and Granado. Personal best lap time last time around from Ferrari, a full 140.6. We're running near full position sort of pace of yesterday, but not quite lap record pace of earlier on. I feel the conditions may have subsided a little bit, deteriorated somewhat. But down the back straight we come, Ferrari in the slipstream. Will he look up the inside? He thinks about it. Wow, it's so fast through there. Turn six in a turn seven. Goodness me. So, so close there. Amazing to think how fast those guys are travelling well over 100 miles an hour through turn seven and then in into second valve. Thought Ferrari was going to have a look here into the bull turn nine. Looks like Granado, Cassidy, and Antonani might be coming back into this fight for the win, you know, Neil. As uh, Torres once again forced to defend his line. And, uh, it looks like uh, Ferrari really wants to get a bit impatient now, trying to make a move on his main championship rival. Absolutely, and uh, the shifts that Jody Torres is making through Dorkerschlund. Turn 11, and here is Ferrari. He's going to have a win to oh, You don't do that. You don't do that. Wow, what an overtake that was. As brave as it gets in any motorcycle racing class through there. Goodness gracious me, Neil Yeah, absolutely. That is going to be the overtake of the situation. to say, fair play. That is the way to win for Ferrari. It's the front. And now the big question is whether Jordi Torres will have an answer for him in these closing laps. Well, this might be the reason why the pace has slowed up a little bit. Maybe Torres wasn't as fast as... Uh, it doesn't quite have the pace that Ferrari can potentially run in these conditions. Maybe he was holding him up a little bit. Ferrari is fighting his time. As we see, Ronaldo's been coming from Cassidy once again.
Yeah, here is Cassidy's move, down into turn one. There on the bricks. Clean as you like, you have to say. Fair over tip there from Isaiah Cassidy. Granada did try to respond. And we'll have to watch that gap more between Cassidy and Torres. And maybe has the chance to reel the Spaniard in. Torres not letting it go, is he? It was too tense over the line. And then in that first sector, then what will it be? Torres just about keeping on the back as Mantovani uh, edges Granado out of the way there. A bit like he did in race one, he called a pretty brutal move on the Brazilian. So Granada being pushed back again there, which is safe to see for him, but I uh, thought he could have been in real contention for a podium today, but perhaps not. Well, it just doesn't quite have an answer for the two Italians in front of him, like what we saw in race one. Granado still just struggling ever so slightly in dry conditions, you feel, this year. Missed, of course, Ryan one due to injury. Johnny Torres getting some fantastic ships with the rear end. Rear end steering through Mugamir. Turn 12 onto that little mini back straight. He's a spider. Just he can clear ever so slightly. It looks as though Larry Nardis is a bigger in the second hand. And he caught the second consistently in the last few sectors there. So will he be able to latch back on? Because that's not very much, to be honest. It's enough that if you really hang it out in that final sector of the final lap, you could catch up enough to make a lunge at the final corner. And then it's a matter of whether he actually wants to do that at this stage of the game and risk no points at all. It's not as having a good ride. It's been sick as well as they For third night, I do feel that uh, they're running out of time though, Cassidy and Mantovani, now nine tenths of a second between second place and third. It's pretty much a two-way fight for first and second here, Matt. I can't see Cassidy getting back into it. No, me neither, unfortunately, but a podium would be very well earned from where he was on the starting grid. Got to give a big shout out, actually, to Pons and Zanoni. Much better from them this time around. They finished 10 to 11, respectively, in race one, now fighting sixth and seventh here in race two. Mantovani can smell the podium here, can't he? He's looking quite ominous behind uh, Mattia Cassidy. We did see in race one that he's not scared to put his bike underneath anyone on this grid. Cassidy will have to be absolutely on top of his game to keep his compatriot behind. Certainly will, the number nine, and looking very, very good on the top form as we saw back in Mugello. He's not just a one-trip pony or a one-circuit pony. He's very good here at Acid as well. But Eric Granado, can he do anything about it as well? He's just losing ground a bit to the two Italians then. He could well have just them two breaking clear. Mantovani all over the back of today. Will he make a move here into the GT chicane? He's going for it. He's done it. Will he make it stick? Wow, all action, isn't he? Wheels all over the place, pointed in all directions. And there they go, neck and neck. Granado and Cassidy across the line then, separated by barely anything. Last lap time, Neil. Here we go. There, that that one could well be wrapped up. Mantovani taking the podium here in Aston. But what about the lead there? Ferrari versus Torres. Has he got enough in hand? It's still three and a half tenths of a second. Yeah, that lead of Ferrari has pretty much remained stationary right the way through this lap. Johnny Torres giving it everything as they break down into turn nine to boot. And then they, of course, have these two double wides before they accelerate. Oh, between his fingers, a disaster for Andrea, goodness me, but we switch our attention back to the lead. Absolutely, it's time to tenths of a second, can Jordi Torres get a good run through the ramps so can line himself up into the GT Chicane for the final time? I think he's got enough in hand as Ferrari, this could be it then, he's going to take a double victory in Assen, it's going to be, or is it, Ferrari from Torres, he's done it, 11 from 81, number 40, Cassidy. Fills out the podium. That was a great finish to a Moto E race.
certainly was. There was uh, drama happening all around us there. From Mantovani's crash out of third to Johnny Torres getting within uh, seven hundredths of a second at the checkered flag. It was a Herculean effort from Torres on the final lap, but just not good enough. Mateo Ferrari very much the start. And he rolled the dice then, he wasn't thinking just about the championship there already, he was, and he wanted that not to concede a five-point disadvantage uh, uh, after this round there from Ferrari. Brilliant, brilliant start on a final lap, as tense as you like. That was pretty much pleasant. 100% race two at Mazzano, he's going for that. But I can see why maybe today was not the day. Yeah, exactly, exactly that, Fran, totally agree. What a race then. So Cassidy, well, he could be happy with that. I mean, from 10th up to 3rd, very well done from him. Um, Granado takes 4th, of course. Pons, his teammate, finished in 5th in the end ahead of Sononi. Great rise from them, respectively. I wonder what happened to Kriminak and Ringazzo. 9th and 11th. Yeah, Kruminacker has to be the most disappointed man in this field, maybe with the exception of Mantovani, of course, who crashed out on the final lap. But, uh, yeah, Krumenacker third in race one, fourth on the grid. Yeah, something just wasn't quite right with the Swiss in that race two. And that, of course, is uh, pretty damaging for his championship hopes. Krumenacker came here fourth in the standings. And he's lost a big, big old chunk of points to both Ferrari and Torres. Torres did give it a go, tried to put Ferrari under as much pressure as he could into that final chicane, but... Yeah, Ferrari this year does look like he's back to his very best. Third win of the season. And fifth podium from eight races. So uh, pretty impressive stuff from Matteo Ferrari. And the chase is on, Neil. That's why Jordi Torres tried to roll the dice. It's now eight points that separates the two titans of Moto E. Absolutely. Obviously, that was uh, 18 points coming here to Assen. Johnny Torres, to be fair, did limit, it, limit the damage with a pair of second places. And he keeps his consistent run going this year. He's been inside the top 10 every single race, and he's had six podiums from it. It's typical Torres, isn't it? Mr. Consistent in this class. That can well be what wins championships, eh, as well? As he spots the camera operator. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, does the uh, finger hearts towards him, etc. As Ferrari comes back into Park Ferme, then two victories here in Assen. That will be his third victory now outside of Italy, as we talked about extensively in race one. Ever the showman is Jordi Torres, one of the last to come back into Park Ferme, then after blowing kisses to just about every single fan still left in the grandstands here today. Safe can stay as well. What pleasant young men they are. <laughs> A few more kisses just uh, just to make sure, Matt, that everyone received theirs. Yeah. Come on, jump up and catch you know, everybody. <laughs> Torres then. Will he be miffed with that? Oh, I would say a little bit miffed. Just as much as racers can be from missing out on a victory. But he certainly, certainly gave it what he could. What's he glaring about, I wonder? That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe he had a scary moment on the last lap trying to chase it down, eh? He did well, though, getting it done from three tenths of a second when he was starting the last lap, down to less than one tenth. Did give it absolutely his all. Didn't leave anything out there on track, did Jordi? six tenths off Ferrari in race one well he got that to under a tenth of his second in race two so great stuff from the top two men I think it's pretty clear Matt this year in 2023 both Torres and Ferrari just have a little something extra on the rest of the field yeah I would uh, certainly agree Neil I wonder if anyone will go away in the summer break a bit of homework no testing of course or anything like that but will they be able to pull something out of the hat for the final for the second four rounds set four rounds I should say I don't want to say final four because that indicates it's already um, wrapping up it certainly isn't um, but uh, could well be a dark horse in the second half of the season yeah, and plenty of racing left to be done. Four rounds in eight races. Of course, we're going to Silverstone next, where Moto E has never been before, so that's kind of a blank slate for everyone. It will be interesting to see just how uh, the results go there. 
new territory for the Moto E World Championship, and obviously the longest track I think it will ever have raced on as well. So that will be interesting. So then, Mattia Cassaday up to the podium then. What a ride that was. How does he feel about it, Frank? Well, Mattia, you ended up having a bit more work to do from your grid position than it seemed yesterday. But that race, you really got your head down, managed to catch the leaders. Congratulations on another podium. Yeah, very good today. I pushed like a bastard because I started in P10. <laughs> but uh, finally, P3 this weekend. I'm uh, happy with this uh, result, but uh, uh, not too much because if I start in front, uh, maybe I can battle for the win, but uh, very good points this weekend and uh, very good work. Now time to rest and uh, come back more stronger in Silverstone and I'm very happy. We'll see you there. Bye. Yeah, I think that was Italian for I pushed very hard. Actually, I think it's actually Bastianini, the official language. <laughs> Yeah, he's of course very good friends with Anea Bastianini as well, isn't he, Cassidy? <laughs> Tatsuki Suzuki and Niccolo Buliga, who they refer to as Booby, all a great quartet. What about second place, though? Jordi Torres, he certainly rolled the dice. I want to know, how did he feel about it? Take it away, Frank. Well, Jordi, you got very, very, very close. In the final race of the season, were you going for that? What were you thinking and how was it on the well, bike? Yes, this race is like uh, the final of the season, no? like you say, but... Uh, yes, during the race we have a little problem with the front tyre, many vibrations. I try to manage this, but you know, I try to do less uh, speed in the middle of corner. Also, the bike, the comportment of the bike is, uh, is working different. I try to adapt the more SE early than as possible. But uh, I know that maybe here in this track, uh, Ferrari have something more than me. I try to, to, to battle, to arrive close, but uh, yes, if I try something more, it's taking risks for the championship. But uh, yes, at the moment, we're right to the break, arriving first. This is always good. We, we can keep continuing in a, in a good way. Also, smiling, this is always good. And yes, we'll see when we return what happens. We will. Enjoy the summer as championship leader. Thank you. <laughs> Always smiling, even on bad days, Jordi Torres is smiling. What do we world championship? Lucky to have a character like him. You have to say, if he was having vibrations at the front of his bike, he was doing a pretty good job to ride around those issues. It certainly was. And, uh, and sterling job then for Jordi. That would explain why he was running such a defensive line for some reason to sort of cut off his mid-corner speed. But what about Ferrari then? Two wins here in Assen. And what about it, Frank? Well, you're just saying no lap record, no pole position, but two victories, not bad. I think that's completely true, Matteo. Really impressive round for you here. After we'd not seen you win outside of Italy before this season, now you seem like the man to be almost everywhere. Are you happy with that? And the gap being just eight points now. I work a lot this winter because uh, until last year, like you said, uh, I never win uh, outside Italy. So this year is better. Uh, the feeling with the team is incredible. We work really hard every time. And also I think for this race too, we did another step. Uh, unfortunately, I did a mistake during the, free pra during the practice start, but uh, I recover. Uh, at the end, uh, I, I close all the, all the door and uh, I, I win. So really happy about that, uh, really close to the force in the final standing, so happy and now a little break and see you in Silverstone. See you in Silverstone. Ciao. Ah, oh, well, I wonder what uh, what Matteo Ferrari will make of the Northampton. Excellent. It'll be just as entertaining to find out his verdict of that. It's the, the centre of civilization, man. Centre of roundabout populations worldwide. Anyway, uh, there we go. That's <laughs> unfair on Swindon. <laughs> Fair enough, Fran. Fair enough. Um, but yes, let's see. That's uh, Eric, uh, Eric Granada getting nerfed out of the way by Ferrari. Then look at that, the finish. Ah, oh, as close as you like, wasn't it? Brilliant. Really, really good. That's a classic Aston finish, that, isn't it? Where you, you come into the final turn and one rider's head of the other. There's no lunge, you think. Oh, he's got it. But then actually, as they're coming out, you think, oh, they're going to get the drive out. And no, no, no. <laughs> Shades of my childhood there, seeing. Foggy and slight, etc. World Superbikes are here in Keith Hewitt. Foggy! Uh, that's what I think every time I see that. One plus one, Assen. That an Alex Way charging pod potentially coming to a petrol station near you, maybe. I think that would be a great marketing thing that would for Motor E. You can have that one for free, an Way. 
Well, we await the podium then while the debrief begins with Piero Taramasso and Jorge Martinez Aspar and Nicola Goubert in the left of our screen. You can see the Red Bull rookies, helpers and uh, mechanics taking their generators into pit lane. Red Bull rookies up next, not on MotoGP.com, but Red Bull TV and various broadcasters available where you are. What's this then? Well, this was the race when an overtake. Ferrari getting the drive through moving mirror. Just managing to find a little gap on the run yeah. down to Horga Heider. God, look at that. That right there, Neil, is what I love about motorbike racing. Pinned throttle, bit of lean angle, side by side, millimeters from each other, fighting for a win. That's what motorbike racing is about for me. Incredible. And they can have a drink now. They can. They were being very well behaved on the podium after race one. Determined not to get any of the uh, Prosecco on their leathers, of course. But uh, a swig one. of luck for, uh, for Ferrari too. And it paid off, didn't it, actually? <laughs> so, there we go, then. Cassidy out to the podium. Big bottles. I've never actually noticed this before. They're not the ordinary bottle of Prosecco, are they? for these guys to get stuck into, but Matteo Ferrari, the happiest man in the paddock currently after his third victory of the season, his tenth victory in the Model E class. It's been a wonderful weekend for him as Paolo Betti, Model E chief mechanic from Jakarta Corsa, presents the third place trophy to Matteo Casadei. Great ride from Casadei coming from tenth. Torres gets the second place one. I'm reliably informed they do actually have the correct sort of shade of colours. Bronze for third, silver for second, gold for first. Here it is then, the trophy for Matteo Ferrari. He can hear it from his team. The way, there we go. Two out of two for today for Ferrari. Ferrari wins in Assen. I will never get tired of those kind of headlines. Now then, time for the Italian national anthem for... Well, the camera shot will 